Hello, my name is Robert McClemon, and this video is an introduction to Lab 3 for students in ES 101, uh, Introduction to Environmental Studies at Wilfrid Laurier University. When you work in environmental studies, it's easy to get a little bit pessimistic about the future. We talk about sustainability and the need to achieve sustainable development in our lifetimes, but when you look at the subjects that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, things like climate change, water pollution, uh, land degradation, population growth, it's easy to look to the future and think, man, can we ever really achieve sustainability? And then back in the 18th century, there was a fellow by the name of Thomas Malthus who argued that human societies can only grow so much before disease, food scarcities, conflicts act to control them and reduce their numbers. And many people today, who we might call Neo-Malthusians, believe that that is the path that we're on right now. Population growth, environmental degradation, and things like that are, are sending us into a period of decline and less well-being in the future. On the other hand, there's people by, that we would call eco-optimists uh, who look to the future and say, no, we're actually on a pretty good path right now and things will only get better. My favorite one of, of these group is uh, an author by the name of Greg Easterbrook, who argues that within the lifetime of anybody watching this video, um, that North America will be a pollution-free and largely sustainable society. Now, he gives a number of examples of how that's possible, and uh, I'm standing in front of one. This is an urban waterway. This is Laurel Creek in Waterloo, Ontario. And when you look at it right now, you might say, well, you know, it's okay. It's, it's got a few pressures on it. Um, there's some litter at the sides of the banks. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's some trucks unloading goods at a building not far from where I'm standing. Uh, and if you go a little bit farther upstream, there's a Walmart parking lot, and who knows what's coming out of the dumpsters in the parking lot and washing into the creek. But to be honest, this waterway is probably in a lot better shape than it would have been in 50 or 100 years ago. Because back then, uh, you were pretty much free to dump whatever you wanted into urban waterways, and many people did. They did just that. There would be industrial pollution, there'd be household rubbish and waste coming into urban waterways. The water quality was very poor in many cases. Uh, often urban waterways would become little more than, uh, than urban sewers, open sewers. Uh, so, but we've learned a lot since then. Nowadays, there are very serious punishments for people who uh, deliberately uh, pollute urban waterways. We have very strict guidelines about what you're able to do along the banks of them and the water quality is actually getting better in many of these, uh, these streams and rivers. And even just upstream from where I'm standing, I've seen some very nice sized sport fish in the, in the river, or in the stream, sorry, and uh, lots of waterfowl as well. So the creek's not doing so bad right now. So it's an example of how we're on the right direction, the right trend in terms of achieving a, uh, sustainability with urban waterways. So in this lab, what we're gonna do is try to put on our positive thinking caps and think of what the future will look like. What will the year 2034 look like if we achieve sustainability? And what will it look like specifically in terms of our homes, our workplaces, the food we eat, and the transportation we use to get around? And so in this lab, you're going to do a variety of exercises. One is um, I'm going to hope that you're going to play a video game that's been designed by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation to, to imagine what a sustainable future will look like. And then what you're going to do is think of some specific examples of sustainability that you think we can achieve in coming decades. And then you're going to describe what those are, where we're at now, and the technological, social, economic, and political steps that need to be taken to get from where we are to that sustainable future. I hope you have a lot of fun with this exercise. I've had a lot of fun just filming this video, and I'll see you in class.